you know, because so it, it's so easy, and I, I fall victim this, of this. Some uh, I fall victim to this sometimes. Is, What's your time split like now between all the things? I mean, I know the the book is written, but you know, between all these different projects you're doing, between you know the kits, making beats, I don't know, networking, hopping on podcasts, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. How do you kind of approach being a dad, right? How do you how do you approach all that? Uh, it kind of changes every day, man. I think. Uh, you know, time management is everything. I know you know that. Uh, so it's it's really me taking every Sunday to see what my week is like. Okay, Monday and Tuesday is going to be focused on these specific projects. Wednesday may just be catching up on um, pro- uh, a podcast that I have to do, trying to schedule most of those in, in, my, in my Wednesday. My Thursday may be um, um, like no music. It may be just all business stuff. You know, um, you know, Fridays may be working on, you know, getting with my musicians and working on sample packs or, or uh, samples or melodies or whatever, you know, so every week is different, but it's just me looking at my week prior to it and filling the slots and what's important for that week and prioritizing what's important. Right. No, I think two things there that are, that are huge. One is like prioritizing is like everything and, and, I know Mm -hmm. for me, it's, I try to look at, okay, I have, we all do, we have this list of, I mean, a hundred things at any minute we could be doing, but then it's like, okay, well, if if I could only do one thing in this next hour today, what would that one thing be? And then let me knock that out or three things, you know, what what are those priorities? That Yeah. I I just saw your video of you, the, the (laughs) choosing three things that that's so important, man. Like just choosing three things every day, what you want to accomplish and focus on those things. And then uh, once you do that, you can, you will start to see these incremental, um, uh, you, you'll start to see these incremental elevations of you getting things done and accomplishing things, you know, cause so it, it's so easy. And I, I fall victim this, of this, some, uh, I fall victim to this sometimes is, uh, you know, uh, we'll do things like my whole week will be completely full of things. And then I'll, I'll come back at the end of the week and be like, what have I actually accomplished though? Right. You know, because being busy doesn't always equate to being productive. Yeah. Ooh, you know, yes. that, you know, just filling your, just <laughs> yes. filling, just filling your schedule in with things doesn't mean that you're productive. So it's like, um, what, what are the main things that, what are the priority tasks that I need to be doing uh, to get to where I'm trying to go or trying to, or, or get to where I'm trying to complete this goal or, or reach this goal? Man, you said it. Being being busy doesn't equate to being productive. I think that's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to get caught up in that trap of like, oh, I'm grinding, I'm doing it, I'm working so yeah. hard. It's like there, <laughs> there's nothing, um, you know, it's not that's not something to be celebrated to me. It's like, oh, great, you filled up your day, cool. Yeah. Like you yeah. should have spent that time with your kid. Like why, like, yeah. like being busy no, is not so cool. That's so true, man. Getting the result. That's so is cool. true, man. Getting the result is cool, you know. Yeah. And that goes back to the what we were talking about earlier, just trial and error, you know, because, you know, you, you realize some things that, uh, that may not be working. That's just keep, just keeping you busy, you know, and you have to kind of, uh, be able to uh, monitor these things and monitor your task and see what's working, see what's not working to be able to make the proper adjustments to to put you back in alignment with, uh, you know, with you reaching the goal and being actually being productive. Yeah. And what's been, I know what's been huge for me, and I'm, I'm curious your take on this is as I find the things that work and the things that, that are getting me the result, then it becomes about, okay, now, now I've created that. Now, how can I leverage uh, maybe automating this or delegating it to somebody yeah. else? Or, cause you know, we all have the same amount of time in the day, but one of the biggest pieces of leverage we have is we can form a team or we can team up with people or we can get find software and ways to automate things so that now I can still get that result and even take less of my own time. That's, that's been the progression for me of, of uh, taking that same day and getting more and more accomplished. That is so important, man. Yeah. That's, that's key. Like everything you just said is key. And then, and then in the process of what you said, I think a lot of it too is, um, and, and I think a lot of producers and, and even beyond producers, just people like this is having patience. Mm-hmm. Patience mm-hmm. is key because, um, you know, like I told you, I've been the last few weeks, I've been dabbling in the Facebook ads and I've been very intrigued with the process and trying to figure it out. And it's like a game. And um, what I'm what I'm doing now, the 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 process that I'm in now is actually testing 
So, you know, when I'm testing certain ads, different access, different audiences. And um, one thing I noticed, I remember early on when I was doing it, and I, and I had a, a guy, Big Ups Cashmere, he was showing me some things as well. And uh, the first two days, I wasn't getting the results. I wasn't getting the results I wanted. And I was like, man, maybe it's not working. And he was like, you got to have patience to give it time. It's got to have time to learn. And it's got to have time to work the algorithms first. And then, you know, so a lot of a lot, a lot of times we'll do this. We'll, because something is not working, we're not giving it enough time to work. You know, you right. got to have that patience to, to see if it's actually going to work. Because what will happen is, Sometimes we'll change the uh, change everything up when it was on path to actually work if we would have just allowed it to work a little bit longer and have the patience to, to let it do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> I love that. I love it's a great analogy. It's it's yeah, it's just like okay, you're you're working on this part of your business or your career or whatever, and it's easy to get frustrated and be like, Oh, I already I put in three days oh, on easy. this or whatever. So now <laughs> I'm gonna give up or I'm gonna try something else or the next shiny object or you know, this is a scam, I don't like this or whatever. Um, but you gotta yeah. just, you know, keep working on it, keep building on those small successes, but but keep, you know, stick with it. It's the, it's I like your analogy. It's the same thing you set up an ad <laughs> in in Facebook ads or, or really any any paid ads platform. It's the same idea. If you run it and you run it for a day and you're like, oh, I just spent whatever a hundred bucks, I didn't make any money back. Let me shut it off or let me change. It's like, no, you gotta you gotta let the algorithm, you gotta let that artificial intelligence yeah. of of the Facebook ads platform go for a little bit and, and put it in front of people in different situations and all these different things so it can gather the data so it can start to optimize so it can actually you know get those results that's that's cool i've never yeah. i never heard that analogy but it's great it's, it really is it's the same idea yeah it's the exact same idea and um and that's that's really what i just kind of been been learning in the process of doing that you know because prior to that like a year or two when i was doing the ads it was like it was just exactly what you just said like trying it a couple of days and not getting much from it and be like, okay, this doesn't work. Let me move on to something else. But then it goes back to uh, learning and, and re retrieving that information and actually learning something. And then once I started learning, it's like, oh, okay, that's not how it works at all. You know, and then and I can start learning it uh, or trying it appropriately uh, through the process of how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> right, right. Because you took the time, you learned, you know, okay, now I can have Because I took the time to learn. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I love that. Um, yeah. And it's, and then, and then it's funny too, because it's kind of keeping the analogy going. Then from there, it's like, okay, I started to figure this out. Now can I, how can I leverage this more? Well, you start to learn more and you say, oh, okay, well, I realized that I needed to get uh, about 8,000 impressions before I got the right amount of data. Oh, I just realized if I'm willing to yeah. spend, you know, 300 bucks today to learn that I can get that information faster. I can leverage that time. I can leverage the position I'm in. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't able to spend 300 bucks in a day before, but right now I can. Mm -hmm. And then eventually even more so at a certain point, you're going to be like, okay, we're super, we're extremely profitable. Yeah. We're getting, you know, 1.5, 2X, you know, return on ad spend every day. Now it's actually going to make sense for me to hire that media buyer who is yeah. $3,500 on top of the ad spend and whatever, because I'm actually going to be more profitable and I can put my time and attention onto the next, you know, yeah. the next thing. That's right, man. That's yeah, right, man. bro. So I see you. Um, I see you figured that out er early on, huh? <laughs> I mean, not er yes and no. Like I was running my own Facebook ads for years, you know, because it, it made sense mm. to me. It was the it made sense mm -hmm. that I should be in there and I should be spending those hours a day learning about it and really tweaking and testing and and getting really good at the process. And that was a good use of my time for a mm. long time. Now, more recently, it's gotten to the point where, yes, I can't, I not keep saying, saying 3,500 bucks. That's, that's what I'm paying, you know, one of my media buyers, um, you know, on top of the ad spend and whatever, but it's because, okay, I know that I can still be, be profitable past that. And now I can buy my time back at a discount where actually yeah. that 3,500 bucks in a month is it's not me spending $3,500 in a month. Yeah. It's me buying my own time back at a discount. Cause my time is actually now more valuable than that. It yeah. wasn't a year ago. It wasn't, you know, two or three years ago for sure, but now it mm -hmm. is. And that's kind of the the progression. No, um, that's so dope. Man, so I want to, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but we kind of, okay. No, so that's we're, good. That's good. <laughs> so we're, we're in your story. We're talking about, you know, connect with Eric Badu. I know a huge moment for you was making that connection with Kanye. Um, can you, can you talk a little bit about how that came to be and, and just tell, tell that story? Absolutely. Um, so the Kanye situation came from uh, my good friend uh, by the name of Ryan Fest. You know, Ryan Fest, he's a, a, a dope writer, songwriter, um, and artist who is was working with Kanye and still is working with Kanye uh, 
to this day on just writing, you know. So at that particular time, um, it was a situation where I started working with Ron Fest on his album and um, I sent him some beats. He hit me back. He was like, yo, I love these beats that you sent me, uh, but I got a situation. I only have uh, enough to pay you for two beats because I'm at the end of my budget. Like I, I don't have any more budget to be able to pay you for it. Uh, are you cool with that? And I was like, yeah, I'm not tripping. Just pay me for the two beats and I'll just give you the other two beats. So I, I did that. Uh, his album comes out and out the blue one day, he just hits me. Uh, he, he gets me a call on my cell and he's whispering. He's like, yo, S, send me some beats through. I'm in the studio with Kanye. And if I get the opportunity, I'll try to play them for him. So I was like, cool. So I wind up sending him some beats. Um, he didn't play them at the time. So about a week, week and a half passed. And I'm already assuming that, okay, he didn't hit me back. So number one, Kanye didn't like it, or two, he wasn't able to play the beats for him. You know, so that's already uh, my assumption in my mind. Uh, but about two weeks later, he sends me a text and the text was like, yo, Kanye is loving your stuff. He said he's about to change your life. Cool. You know, so I'm reading you remember, this text. Do you remember that like, moment? This is, I, rem I remember the moment like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm looking at this test, this text, and I'm like, yo, this is this is crazy. So a couple of days later, my wife and I were at Red Lobster, we're eating. And while we're eating, I get an email that comes through, an email alert. And the email is from Don C, who was managing Kanye at the time. And on his email, it was like, yo, S, um, get to the airport soon. Uh, we're flying you out to Hawaii to come work with Kanye. So I wind up going out to, to uh, flying out to Hawaii. And you can just imagine this whole six hour flight that I'm on. I'm just sitting here thinking like, like what's going on? Like what's happening? Things is happening so fast. Uh, so I get to Hawaii and that's when I first uh, was able to meet Kanye. When I got first got to the studio, it was him, Ron Fest, and an engineer in the room. And he introduced us. And then Ye was like, yo, uh, I'm, I'm loving your beats. Uh, they making me want to rap again. I already recorded to one, the one with the chance you sent. I'm going to play it for you. Check it out. So he hits play. And I remember just hearing this, hearing the power joint, him rapping on it. And it was a completely different version, like different raps, different hook. Um, but I remember just listening and it was like, yo, like, how did I end up here? Like Kanye wow. is actually rhyming over my beats. And uh, and it was amazing. just a moment, man, because that was that was that was uh, one of my dreams, man. I remember when College Dropout first came out, and just listening to this album was like, "Yo, I gotta work with Kanye one day." Like, this is my this is what I love, like this type of music and what he's doing. Like, I gotta work with him one day. So, to be in that moment, I started re all these prior thoughts and and and. Um, what I used to think in those moments came back to me and it was just very um, emotional, man. Just like, yo, how did I end up here in the same room with Kanye and he's actually rapping over my beat? <laughs> Bro, that is, I got goosebumps. That's, that's incredible. And then the fact, so that first song you heard was Power, the first one that, that you guys worked on? Cause that's yeah, the I mean, first that's song such that we, the, iconic song. I mean, that's, God, that's, it's, it's like a perfect story. It's yeah, amazing. That, <laughs> yeah, that was the first. That was literally the first song that I uh, did with Kanye. Wow, was, was the power joint. Wow, yeah, <laughs> that that is dope. And then, so you stayed out there in Hawaii for a little bit, and you worked on uh, a few a few different songs, or how did that how did that process? Yeah, work? yeah, I, I stayed out there for two weeks. Um, you know, after I heard that, he was like, "Yo, I would love for you to stay out here for a couple of weeks and help me. I'm working on this this at my album, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy." stay out, hang out, and help us work on the album. So I wound up staying out there and meeting a lot of people. Um, I, after the two weeks, I went back home. And at that moment, my whole mindset was like, yo, okay, I just went out here to work with Kanye. Uh, I got his contact information. There's no reason why I shouldn't be sending him something every day. Like everything else, didn't matter at that moment that was the that was the plan that was the whole goal is to make sure that i'm sending him stuff every day so i will send him the batch he'll he would email me yo hold this one 
Next day, I sent him another batch. Yo, hold these two. Next day, I sent him some more beats. And then he was like, man, I'm, I, I need all these beats. Come back out to Hawaii so we can track all of them. So I flew back out to Hawaii. Uh, and that's when I found out that Power was going to be his first single. Because they were, they were actually trying to get the song right, you know, to be able to, to release that first. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. What, what, no, no, what no. I was just saying like? yeah. As, as far as, um, you know, I know you mentioned the version that you heard was different than how it ended up. And I know from what I've heard that Kanye is definitely somebody who uh, takes a bunch of different influences and takes, or, or not even just influences, but like different people in the room and ideas yeah. and kind of masterminds it all together and tries all different versions. Is that, is that mm -hmm. accurate? Is that kind of what the process looks like? Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I brought like the, the, the foundation in the break, the sample, um, like the siren, and then, of course, Kanye added his his magic to it. Um, he added another sample to it. Uh, and then, of course, the, uh, you got Mike Dean and Jeff Basker, who did some additional production on it as well. They come and add their sauce to it. Uh, and then in the process of that, he had different songwriters trying different hooks to it. He had different artists jumping onto it, um, you know, just trying different verses. And uh, the one thing about Kanye is it's always the best idea is going to win no matter who you are no matter if you're the smallest producer in the room the smallest songwriter nobody knows you like if you deliver the best idea for the song then your idea is going to uh remain on the song you know so it's very competitive but at the same time uh, everyone has a fair chance of you know opp fair opportunity into actually making the song it's just about what you deliver Wow, that's 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 cool. So it's it's that seems like some real leadership, like um, not letting. I'm I'm sure there's definitely some big egos in the room. I mean, you guys are you know the the best in the world, and, and but still to know that it's it's a meritocracy in that way, where it's like whoever's got the best idea, cool. Let's let's just go with that. Yeah. Um, that's really cool to hear that it wasn't like oh well I didn't come up with that one, so I'm not going to do that or or. Yeah. Like no, that. it it. It was it was a very exciting process. However, at times it was very uh, intimidating. <laughs> I can imagine because you're competing with so many great minds. It's like oh snap, and you're bouncing the back, you're bouncing back and forth from rooms, listening to other people's contributions, what they're contributing, and uh, yeah, it's it's intimidating. But at the same time, I, I me personally, I have to I had to keep keep reminding myself that I was I wasn't there by by chance. There was a reason that I was in the room. And um, and yeah, it's just all about having that the confidence, you know, having that right confidence that I knew that I was supposed to be there and there was a purpose and a reason for me actually being there. Right, right. Yeah, man. Um, I got these construction guys next door, but we'll, we'll, uh, power, we'll power through it. But yeah, um, we'll, get, we'll get through it. <laughs> so that was um, that was almost exactly 10 years ago, right? And I know you dropped a kit based off of that, which I thought was really cool, a yeah. really cool concept. Um, what, how did you get the idea to do that or where did that kind of come from? Uh, well, the idea was sparked by me not releasing something in a, a while. And I was like, okay, I have to get back consistent with releasing a uh, thing. So I knew that was coming up. I had did this thing with spot where Spotify had hit me up. It was like, yo, we're doing this rollout for, uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. We want you to be one of the narrators on this little minute, uh, cartoon narration that they put together. So I did that, and then I remember after that, I was like, oh, I got to I gotta create something. Since I was a part of that project, let me figure out something to create. And that's when I came up with the idea of, let, of creating uh, the kit, my kit that I released uh, called Sounds and Loops I made from uh, MB TDF, uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Uh, and, and basically the whole theme and concept for, for that kit was just me going through old hard drives and those sessions and, and those beats that Kanye had and pulling elements from those beats and reimagining them, you know, and uh, doing certain things to them and, and, you know, just having fun with it and putting it in a kit and giving it to the world or releasing it to the world. That's awesome. It's such a, yeah. it's a dope concept and it's something, you know, I, I love it because it's sort of this combination of the sort of traditional industry 
stuff that you would do. And then, but now how do I mm-hmm. take that? How do I flip that? How do I leverage that into something that, you know, that you have ownership of, or that is just, or, or it doesn't yeah. even matter that necessarily, but just a reimagining of it. How can I, how can I let other producers, you know, be a part of this in a different way? It's just, it's, it's yeah. a cool concept. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was cool. And then, and then once I had that concept, I just kind of built, continued to build on it. Like, how can I still make this, this theme, um, uh, how can I still uh, involve people and, and, and actually put them in the experience? So you have the sounds, which was uh, basically sounds that I was using and, and creating around that time. And then I think I put like two chapters of the book that actually was talking about how the, um, um, you know, I have a chapter in the book called Heaven Sent Che, was basically talking about the what I just told you about Ron Fest and how that came about. And then the chapter after that is called I Got the Power. And it's really detailing um, that whole situation being in Hawaii, you know, and, and what I was actually seeing and going through. Uh, and it really puts you in my moment of, of, of me being out there in Hawaii, you know. So I'll put those two chapters in there as well. And um, yeah, just seeing how it could in, increase the value of the, of the, of the product. I love it. I love it. Something I talk about a lot is, is how can you increase the value? Cause like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people selling, you know, kits and stuff. Um, but how can I do something different? How can I put a twist on it? Well, for one, you have an incredible story that goes along with it. So that's part of it. But then it's also, how can I even take that to the next level? How can I bring people in? How can I incorporate that story even more? And then so you're including the, the chapters from your book. And it's like, for me, even just hearing you tell that story, I was like, this is amazing. So it just creates this, <laughs> this super cool experience you know where it's like okay as a producer i can download this kit i can play with it i can be in that story i can feel like i'm i'm living it. i can feel like i'm there it's just it's just a dope yeah. concept i mean i know i'll just shout it out real quick yeah. people can grab that at, at uh, s1kits.com right if they want to check that out yeah 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 grab it at, you can grab the physical at s1kits.com uh and then i have uh the ebook uh at amazon uh and then i have um my audio book at audible Dope. So I did an audio book as well, which uh, which actually I just got uh, uh, nominated for a, a Solvis Award. You know, hey. it's kind of like the, the, yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that because that was definitely not, un, that was definitely unexpected when I was uh, recording the audio book. <laughs> oh, well, man, congratulations. I actually just downloaded the, uh, the audio book. I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm, I'm excited too, for sure. So. I appreciate so. it, man. Yeah, I, I wanted to do some, uh, add value to the audiobook too. So me and my guy, I, I know you know Kelvin Wooden, incredible composer, musician, producer. Uh, we went through and scored it. So in between chapters, you got different uh, compositions, and uh, and then like I say, I narrated the book to to make it a little bit more personal. Uh, I had my guy Ron Fest. He did the um, about the he read the narrated the about the author for me. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, the, the audio book it came out really well. Amazing. Always, always seeing how you can create more value. How can you be more creative? How can you put a twist on it? How can you stay hungry and do something different? I, I love it, man. It's super inspiring. Yeah, man. Um, well, I think, I think we'll probably wrap it up pretty soon here. I know I'm, I'm excited. We talked about, we're going to, we're going to hop on and check out your ads, yeah, manager and geek out a little bit. So we'll, yes. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get working on some of that. <laughs> um, man, before we get out of here, um, if you could just let people know, you know, where to find you, if you got anything coming up, if you got any, anything you want to end on, um any combination of those three things let me know okay yeah so uh so yeah y'all can follow me on uh socials uh instagram twitter uh at symbolic one that's s-y-m-b-o-l-y-c-o-n-e uh so make sure you follow me hit me up you know i, I love uh, replying back to people you know um make sure you get the book so everything s1kits.com is pretty much the one stop one stop shop for uh all my products from the book to my kids, to merch. Um, yeah, yeah, so make sure you hit me up on that. And then uh, what else? And then as far as future things, man, I'm just I'm just having fun, man, working on a bunch of uh, projects that I have working on. Y'all check the new Eminem out that came out today. Um, produced a song called Discombobulated uh, with my guy, Lone Star Music, Dr. Dre and uh, Frano. Um, yeah, bro. So we just, just constantly working, constantly creating and seeing how we can continue to push the envelope. Love it. S1. Appreciate you taking the time, bro.
Man, I appreciate you, bro.